I think teaching was the first place that I realised I was kind of like slightly traditional, old-fashioned, you know, right of centre, because teaching's quite a lefty sort of profession, isn't it? And I was an English teacher. I remember I was teaching this one class, and the head of English come in, right? I forget her name, it was something like Mrs. Hyphen Mungbean or something like that, right? And she came in. <laughs> she said, Mr. Norcott, is it okay if I address your class for a minute? I said, well, you know, it's a minute I don't have to do. Knock yourself out. <laughs> She said, and then she gave him this long speech, and at the end, she goes, uh, she goes, right, kids, in the English department, we are very big on the idea that there are no wrong answers. I was like, there are. <laughs> there are, there are wrong answers, like, obvious, I mean, they're, no, they're a bottom set, like. <laughs> no, no, they're lovely kids, but even the register is a bloody minefield, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I could tell that she wanted to tell me that I was wrong, but. By the sword. You can't tell teenagers that there are no wrong answers. That's what they already think. That's the most dangerous thing to tell a teenager. I had this girl called Georgia, right? Very stroppy girl, came from a good family, but a real problem, right? And now she thinks there are no wrong answers. She wouldn't read of Mice and Men, but she felt confident enough to share her views on the text. She went, I'm not going to read it because I don't actually think it's got that much mice in it. I don't know what that means. Still don't know. Right? So I got her parents up to school. Now, her mum was all right, but the dad, the moment I saw the dad, I got a sense of the problem, right? He was one of these modern namby-pamby, middle-class parents who was just weak as, you know. And everything I said to him, he just deflected it back. I said, Mr. Simpson, your daughter is obstructing the learning for the other girls in the class. And he went, well, you know, bless Georgia. You know, bless Georgia. Well, the thing is, Mr. Norcott, she's just trying to express herself. I said, it's not that, mate. She doesn't know any stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, you know, the thing is, Mr. Norcott, when I grew up, my dad, he never let me express myself, you know. He was always cutting me off, and can I just stop you there, mate? I said, <laughs> I said, I think I know the problem. It, it's you. Like, you never told your daughter, shut the fuck up. I mean... <laughs> Come on, that's an important part of parenting, isn't it? Obviously, you've got to love them, nurture them, but every once in a while, say, you know what, you're talking shit, you might want to sit this one out. <laughs> Right, and, while, yeah. and while we're at it, no, you shouldn't go on X Factor, all right? No, you shouldn't. It should be obvious why. You can't sing. You cannot <laughs> sing. No, I know I cried when you sang Whitney, but those are tears of shame. Do you understand? <laughs> it's not, it's not you disrespecting me in front of Dermot. <laughs> but that's the problem. You know, when you teach, once the kids get to, like, 15, 16, you should be preparing them for the harsh world outside the school gates. But no, at one school, really posh school, I was doing counselling for kids that had better lives than me. <laughs> they had more money in their trust funds than I could borrow for a house. <laughs> I'd sit there and go, oh, yeah, so that must have been tough for you. Yeah, you're, you're right. Interest rates aren't what they were, yeah. <laughs> I had this one lad called Jordan, right? Jordan come in, and he, uh, for once, it seemed like it might be a genuine problem. He looked absolutely stricken. He said, I've got problems at home, sir. I said, what is it, Jordan? He said, I've got to share a room with my brother. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I think I heard about this on Comic Relief, yeah. Um... <laughs> so, right, so I put my arm around him. I took him, to the, I took him to the window. I said, look out there, Jordan. You see out there, son, is the field. See, at the edge of that field is a fence, you see that? Beyond that fence is approximately seven billion people that don't give a fuck about what you just said, that's right. 